Hey guys, Hakeem here, back with some more Demir on Earth. Opening hand only has one land, it enters the battlefield tapped. And a bunch of spells, you know, not gonna not gonna get tricked into a one lander again. Now we look at three land. Uh, we have Cycling on Dragger into Hardcast Brackwater with a Bounce Spell and Intelligence. So, I mean, not the fastest hand, but uh, I'm gonna give it a shot since we've got three land and a bunch of stuff we can actually do. So. Pass it over to Elam, who's playing 60 cards. Starts off with Forest into Elvish Pioneer. I am seeing a lot of Elvish Pioneers on the first turn these days. I don't know what is going on with people. You know? All sorts of Pioneers. Anyways, uh, he puts an extra land in play. We get to... Oh, we pick up a Tide Hollow Strix. That is better than... Uh, that is better than cycling a, uh, a Viscera Dragger at this point. So we'll just put our 2 one Flying and Death Toucher into play. Next turn we'll cast a Breck Water. And the following turn, we can uh, follow it up with military intelligence and start drawing some cards. So now he's gone to three mana on the second turn, which is not particularly, and he doesn't even attack into my 2 1, which is, you know, a mistake because I'm obviously not going to block there. He doesn't do anything with his uh, with his three mana on turn two. You know, I generally, uh, I generally, um, if you can pioneer into cultivate, I like it. Otherwise, I don't like pioneer at all. So I pretty much don't like it. <laughs> so we're going to attack here for two, and then uh, then get the four four Brackwater into play. Yeah, my opponent definitely should have attacked last turn because I'm obviously not going to trade a, a two power evasive creature for a for a lowly little pioneer. So he he left a point of damage on the table, and then he just leaves. Um, yeah. I mean, what are you going to do? I mean, uh, don't have time to really cut it. It's core after 11 here. I fell asleep on the couch with my uh, kids tonight. We were watching Hotel Transylvania. I just, uh, I'm not long up actually, so I'm going to be up for another uh, another hour or two, I'd imagine. Just because of that uh, big old power nap that I just had. So we're going to swing for six here. And uh, I would I would hope that the AI is going to block the uh, the Brackwater with that Pioneer. We pick up a card, which is a Shore Stalker off the uh, military intelligence, but the computer just takes four. He doesn't attack with the 1-1, one, one, and doesn't block with it either. So, uh, I will just, uh, we're gonna lose the Brackwater at the end of the turn, so I will play out this Shore Stalker here. I'm letting down uh, Voyage's End, and the Cycling on Viscera Dragger, but I'd rather just get the creature into play while I can. There's, I don't think there's anything that's uh, particularly scary gonna come up that at this stage of the game that I'm gonna need to spend the Voyage's End on. And this will just show you another reason why I don't like Elvish Pioneer, and that's the fact that yeah, you get a land into play early, but you don't get you know it doesn't help you draw any lands or find any lands in any way. So, I mean, he still got the three mana and, and started missing his land drops because he didn't didn't have enough lands. So now he's playing Elixir of Immortality, which uh, seems to find its way into just about every deck in the game, and I don't really understand it because it's not a uh, it's not a very good card, in, you know, unless you're playing a control deck and you need the recycling, or, or you're maybe you're playing a life gain deck. Other than that, it doesn't really do anything. Um, so let's just, uh, I think we will just unearth here, swing for seven, and then hold open the cycling and the uh, and the voyages in. So let's just get the brack water into play. And then we'll swing for seven and draw a card. And see if our opponent will crack open that elixir, just to uh, just to gain the five life. So he's down to five right now. I'm gonna pass it over. We picked up an island off the military intelligence. But no, he doesn't spend his two mana on the elixir. He just goes up to four land and uh, should swing here because I don't have any. He doesn't have anything that uh, that he can block of mine. So. Just coming on in for the one. So now we're going to cycle this, get a card, and uh, get him in the graveyard ready to uh, ready to be unearthed. So for now, I think we'll just uh, I think we'll just unearth him and force the uh, force the computer to crack its elixir here because we're swinging for lethal. So we'll come in for six and draw a card, which is another dragger. And uh, it's getting pretty late in the timer here. Here we go. There's the five life gain. Bring him up to ten. Um, and we're not going to get, excuse me, punished for for overextending against mono green. So just do this right here. Again, I'll hold open this and this because 
pretty much got him dead anyway, and right now we can throw three power in the graveyard that we can use next turn. So obviously we're not going to block the Pioneer here. <coughs> oh shit. Oh, I just reached out to get my cream soda and uh, and missed the cycling on Viscera Dragger. Whoops. But he doesn't have a fog or any any removal or anything like that, so we still get in for the lethal. So uh, yeah, when it gets close to your opponent's end step, don't reach out to grab your drink. You could miss your opportunity to cycle your card, and if you know if it had been a close game and it actually mattered. But fortunately, it wasn't. So let's uh, let's get into another game against this guy. Another guy with 420 tacked onto his gamer tag. I mean, uh, the parents of these kids, don't they know what that means? I mean, if my kids created a username for themselves with 420 on the end, I'd be a little bit uh, suspicious over what they're up to in their free time. But who knows, boy? Who knows? Oh, my. Yeah, the old power nap, boy. Really, I should be going to bed now, you know, since I've got work 7 o'clock in the morning. But, you know, I just had a nap, and I'm, I probably, I'll probably be up for another hour. Or two. Let's uh, let's look here. We've got Strix, Shore Stalker, and Intelligence, but we can't cast the Shore Stalker on one and the Strix on two. I'm still going to keep it though because we're on the draw. We may pick up a Swamp, and still we've got two creatures and Intelligence, so I'm going to keep it. The question is whether or not I play this on one and wait to play this till three, or if I play this on two and this on three. But we'll see what uh, we'll see what we draw on the first turn instead. Our opponent AZ Green Code has started off with a Grull Gill Gate. We pick up a, another Shore Stalker. So now I think it's firmly in the play a Shore Stalker on turn one, and then drop a Gate plus another Shore Stalker on turn two, and then a, a Strix on turn three. I think that's uh, I think that's the plan. But we'll see. You never know. If we pick up a Basic Swamp uh, on our second draw step, probably probably just get this guy straight into play. So, Mr. Green Code. I mean, uh, AZ is that you know American for Arizona? I'm you know from Canada. I don't really know. So, is there some kind of meaning behind that name that I'm missing? I don't know. Now he's played a Silesnia Gilgate and he's dropping a Wild Nakatle into play. Okay, so Wild Nakatle is a one-one for one, but it can get as big as a three-three if he controls a. Okay, so now this is interesting here now. Picked up a Cloudfin Raptor. So I think I can... I can either play the gate and play the Raptor. I can now play an island. Play both of these guys. But I'm, I'm delaying the Strix, you know, further and further. So I think if I play the gate next turn, I can play Strix plus one drop. Yeah, and I can still play the Cloudfin Raptor this turn. Okay, that's what I'll do. That's how I'll sequence it. So next turn I'll have three mana. I'll be able to cast. Uh, I'll cast the Shore Stalker first. That'll evolve the. Oops. That'll evolve the Raptor to a one-two, and then I'll cast uh, the Strix, and that'll evolve the Raptor to a two-three. So we've got in for one. But this, this Wild Knock Cattle can get pretty big, so he's played a Mountain now, he's got a 2-2. Uh, a two -two. And he's putting a young Pyromancer, Pyromancer in play, so that's a 2-1. Uh, Whenever he casts an instant sorcery, he gets a creature token. So that thing can get out of hand pretty quickly. I'm not going to block the uh, block the Knock Cattle here. So it looks like we're probably going to be in a race here now. I'd, I'd like to pick up some bounce spells eventually. Got another copy of Military Intelligence. Right now we'll get the island into play and we will cast a Shore Stalker, make sure not to tap that gate. Get this into play. Evolve the Raptor. And then we will get the Tide Hollow Strix into play and evolve the Raptor again. And uh, with the Death Toucher, you know, I've got already four evasive power with the two Shore Stalkers and the two, three, um, Raptor. If he comes at me with uh, with a three three wild knockoddle, or if he attacks with Pirate Master, I'd, I'd be inclined to trade with either one of those. So let's just pass it on. Over next turn, I'm going to have four mana, 
and uh, I'll probably, you know, depending on what I draw, if I don't draw anything of relevance, I might just stick both of those military intelligences in play and then start drawing some more cards. He's playing, uh, he's playing Ogre Battle Driver. So this this gives his creatures haste and plus two plus zero after he casts them, which is pretty insane. And he's not attacking here. So uh, picked up a Brackwater Elemental. Um, picked up a Brackwater. If I cast that, I can't cast anything else this turn. I can't cast these intelligences and start drawing cards. So I think I want to start drawing cards, honestly. Yeah, I'm going to put them both into play. And do I swing for six here and open the door? I don't believe so. I'm going to keep that Death Toucher home just to uh, kind of deter him a little bit. I'm going to swing for four and draw a pair of cards. Bounce spell, which is going to be pretty good, and a land, which is fine. You know, just you know, drawing three cards per turn. I don't mind drawing uh, an excess of land because that's just going to happen. So I've got him down to twelve. We're on eighteen, but he's got uh, he's got a nasty board going over there. I'd hate to see something like uh, like a Brimaz or a Baneslayer hit the battlefield with haste. A sign of the wild is uh, four. You know, he's got power and toughness equal to the number of creatures that he controls. I've got the Death Toucher here, so let's see if he wants to bring anything. Uh... So I've got the... I'm going to kill that. Because I've got the Brackwater to follow up that can block most pretty much anything else on the ground. As long as I just keep going with my evasive creatures. And I've got two copies of uh, Voyages Enter now. But I can play the Brackwater. Evolve the Raptor to a 3-4. And, uh, and then swing for 5 and draw two cards. So I think that's the plan. So let's just get in for five, draw a pair of cards. And we've got Voyages in for any big nasty stuff that hits the battlefield uh, and can start attacking via that battle driver. So let's just pass it over to him. And let's see what he's got. Inferno Titan would be bad. Uh, Attended Knight is pretty bad. So I think what I'll do here is just uh, just actually bounce this right now since he can't recast it and he won't get the triggers on the bottom of land here. So we bounced the Battle Driver and now he just gets his uh, his two one and his one one, but no no haste and we've got a four four blocker in the uh, in the way. Yeah, and he's just saying see you later. Back to us here, pick up another land. Uh, I think the play here is just to swing with my three evasive guys. Swing for five that he can't block. Draw another pair of cards. We got a Biden, too a bit late for that. And we got a Vapor Snag. So that'll bring him down to two. And we're just going to pass with our bounce spells open. And this time it's he's recasting the Ogre Battle Driver, which is fine. And then he's playing a Nakala, so I think we will just voyage in the Battle Driver again. And we've got something on top that isn't a land, so we're going to keep it there at this stage of the game. And he's got one card in his hand, Barring Fog. We've uh, we've got the game. So let's just bring here uh, all these creatures in case he has righteous blows or shocks or something like that. You know, I don't want to just try and bring two creatures and uh, and get cute. No, we got him. Okay, here we go. Wait, <coughs> wait till after the match to have a sip of cream soda so you don't miss the cycling on a on a Viscera Dragger. And uh, it's only 14 minutes. Let's see if I can see if I can find another lobby here. Play a Star Dog 2525. Oh my, yeah. So I gotta figure out something to uh, something to do now. This late at night, everybody's in bed. I, sh I should be in bed myself. But God damn it, falling asleep on the couch. Oh my, so what happens when you get old? You just can't you can't stay up till 10, 10 or eleven o'clock anymore. You know, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? So we're on the play, uh, and we've got a Tide Hall Strix that we can put out on the second turn. Two, three drops, so if we pick up a land, these are castable. 
And uh, if I start missing land drops, I'll probably just bounce whatever the hell my opponent throws at me just to scry. Since I've got uh, I've got two of them, so yeah, I'll keep I'll keep this. You know, just one more land and uh, and we're golden. We got a couple threats we can play. But of course, I've said that before. Just one more land and uh, I never got the uh, never got the prayer answered. So uh, Star Dog starts off with a Boros Guild Gate. Picked up a second Strix, which is good. Even if we don't get another land now, we can uh, still have a turn three play. So we get the uh, the turn two Strix on the play, which is a pretty strong start. Whenever I see the Boros Gilgate, I get worried that he's probably playing the Boros Token deck. The Young Pyromancer's Crinkles Command, Raise the Alarms, Triplicate Spirits, and all that nonsense. Pretty, uh, pretty extremely difficult deck to beat, actually. So he plays another gate, and he's just going to shock my Strix, which is, uh, which is a little bit annoying, but, you know, what are you going to do? We got the second one here, uh, and we have a Viscera Dragger. So I'm still I'm gonna get another Strix into play and then uh, then we can cycle this to hopefully draw a card and uh, and get that third land. So let's just pass it back to him, see if he's playing that deck or not. You know, I'd hate to see a Rabble Master or a Brimass here now, but those uh, those are cards in those token decks as well. It is a Pyromancer, yeah. So it looks like it's gonna be the Boros token deck. He's probably gonna shock me again here now and create a one-one. He doesn't do it yet. He may. I uh, still didn't get a land. Um, so let's just uh, swing for two, I suppose. Still no shock. Okay, so we just get in for two. Let's see. Uh, let's see what he follows up this pyromancer with. It is the Brimass, so now I'm going to bounce that since he can't recast it this turn. And uh, see another Biden on top, which we're going to flick to the bottom since we've got one in hand. So there's the Brimass. But now his Pyromancer is back in his hand and he doesn't have the two land to recast it. So he should have just attacked first. I, I wouldn't have bounced it. Still can't get a land. Uh, yeah, story of my life. Story of my fucking life. Oh my, I've drawn, uh, I've drawn four cards and bottomed an on-land card, but let's just attack for two here. Hold open the Voyage's End and the Cycling, see what he uh, see what he does on his turn. If he just comes into combat or if he starts casting stuff pre-combat. So he's going to put a Nimbus Wings on his, bane, on his Brim Ass, so uh, that means that I'm just going to bounce that back to his hand again. So lose the wings and he won't be able to cast it. He could have God's Willing Pro Blue. I mean, that's a, that's a possibility. And if he has it, he has it. Yeah, he does have it. So uh, so that kind of sucks, but I had to go for it there. So he's going to give it protection from blue. It's not going to get bounced. He's going to have a 4-6 Vigilant Flying Dude that creates tokens. But at least he won't be able to cast his Pyromancer this turn. I guess that's the upside. Looking for some small upside, but uh, you know, pyromancers and brimasses are, are tough to beat. And when I can't get uh, when I can't get a third land to cast any more of my threats, you know, it's a little bit annoying. It's a little bit annoying. Still can't get a land, so I'm just gonna hang back with the death toucher here. Hang back with the death toucher and uh, you know, cycle this dragger. Act like I have a bounce spell when I don't. Here comes the Pyromancer. I'm gonna get the shit kicked out of me this game. Absolutely gonna get the shit kicked out of me. He's gonna shock the Strix, create a token. Yeah, absolutely getting the shit kicked out of me. There's the land, finally. A little bit too late though. You know, I'm taking six here. And uh, my opponent's got one hell of a board. So. Yeah, pretty much on the, uh, pretty much knocking on death's door here now. Knocking on death's door. There's okay, so we finally got the land, but I mean it's just too little, too late. I'm gonna flash in the pestermite on his turn, tap down his brimass. But uh, you know, I don't think it really matters. So he's coming into combat. Let's tap down that brimass. 
I don't know why it would target the Nimbus wings. So there we go, that'll stop him from attacking for at least one turn. But he's going to attack with his three tokens here. Because he doesn't mind trading those off with my flyer. He's bringing the Pyromancer. I mean, that tells me he's got Pro Blue or something. No, he's just, he's just going to shock. Which kills my blocker. He gets in for five and creates another token. So yeah, he had three copies of Shock too, which is another... Uh, there's another nail in my coffin, you know, to take out two of my Strixes and my uh, and my Pestermites that I just flashed in there. So yeah, with his board like that and uh, and mine like that, uh, I don't know. Can I live another turn? I'm just gonna shag around here now. I'm not gonna vapor snag his Brimaz right now. You know, I'm giving him an extra turn to draw into another God's Willing here, but. Uh, I'm gonna hope he. No, I'm just gonna try and vapor snag it right now. Probably gonna get another God's Willing Pearl Blue. Yeah, but you know, the game was uh, the game was well in hand long ago. Boros token deck is uh, is pretty ridiculous. You don't usually see the uh, Nimbus wings in there. I mean, I guess it makes Pyromancer a three-three flyer. Brimaz is obviously uh, insane with it. So yeah. Just uh, totally got steamrolled by the Boros token deck, which, uh, you know, I don't know if you've ever played with or against it. It's pretty fucking nasty. So, yeah, that's the game. Totally got my ass handed to me. But what can you do? You know, I don't think that I really have a realistic... The only shot I have in the Boros token matchup is that he either mulligans himself into oblivion or draws nothing but land. And, uh, and no relevant spells, which is <laughs> which is basically to say that I, that I don't have a chance in the world. All right, well, uh, that's episode four. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you for some more gameplay tomorrow.